look at BT cotton and it's been more than 20 years since its cultivation started, the data and the results speak for themselves. You know, the pesticide usage has increased. It has become resistant to other uh, pests which were not that mainstream. Pink ballworm has become a major, major issue in cotton. Fertilizer usage for BT cotton has increased as it was predicted that it would uh, because it is a uh, you know hybrid BT cotton and hybrids do need greater fertilizer usage. The cost of seeds to farmers have gone up drastically. You know, um, uh, in 2018, six years ago, it was anticipated that the royalty costs uh, from BT cotton for Monsanto, just the royalty cost, leave aside the additional cost at which other companies, uh, 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 the other income that they were making was 8,000 crores. Uh, there are numerous studies which have spoken about how cost of cultivation, there are government reports which sp speak about how cost of cultivation has gone up for farmers. There has been greater indebtedness. It has also been seen that these are the systems and parameters under which there have been greater suicide of farmers in geographies where uh, BT cotton has been widespread as well. Uh, um, the yields have uh, actually started to decline. It was promised that the yields would go up. However, what was seen was, was that the increase in yield, which was continuing from before the time BT cotton into uh, came into mainstream, it was increasing then. However, uh, when BT cotton actually became mainstream, when it acquired you know 40%, from there on, the yield stagnated. And now they're actually declining. Uh, I mean, uh, but they use this to portray the story that even in the initial years, BT cotton actually had a greater yield, whereas its percentage was minuscule when the yield was actually growing. And there have been research by you know acclaimed scientists who have mentioned that it was not BT cotton, it was actually the increase in fertilizer usage, it was increase in irrigation, which was leading to an increase in uh, yield in cotton, even before the years BT cotton came mainstream. And uh, rather than looking at the full data set, they, uh, I mean, the proponents of GM cotton have all time and again looked at a small data set of farmers to show that these farmers actually benefited. And they time and again hide from referring to the full data census and taking a very small proportion of farmer to mislead people. And just in the, re I mean, just in the last year, we have actually seen uh, Rajasthan government had to put a relief fund of over a thousand crore because of the loss. Uh, to BT cotton by pest attacks. Similarly, Punjab, Haryana, huge losses have come, gone to farmers. Now, who's going to actually pay the governments for that? I mean, why are the promoters of GM cotton not held accountable for the losses that are being incurred by the farmers, by the government? And it was actually predicted that these things will happen. There was there were voices which were mentioning at that time as well that there are going to be issues with this. There have been government reports where they've mentioned in terms of how farmers have been making huge losses uh, on uh, BT cotton as well. Uh, even beekeepers reported how honeybees started staying away from BT cotton crops. Now, uh, BT cotton uh, is supposed to you know not be entering our food supply chain. Uh, however, uh, the cotton seed oil is actually being sold to consumers, which is basically genetically modified cotton seed oil, uh, which is illegally entering our food supply chain. The insecticides, which are also being used in BT cotton, are entering our a food, su uh, food supply chain uh, as well. And obviously, you know, we do know that uh, most of the countries who are who have a higher yield than India in cotton do not use GM cotton as well. 